Hello and welcome to The Hearing. I'm John. And I'm Scotto. And without any further ado, on to this week's album, which is from 2014, Fox by Fox, their debut album. Fox uh, was, was an American... That did uh, Let's Go All the Way. In the, that uh, was I... Sly Fox. Oh, right, right, right. Fox was an American six-piece alternative folk slash indie pop band formed in Baraboo, Wisconsin in May of 2011. They released one studio album before announcing an indefinite hiatus on October 17th, 2016. They did a short tour in January and February of 17, saying, called the Goodbye For Now Tour, and played their fa- farewell show on February 4th in Baraboo, um, and got a lot of attention between the release of that album and their farewell. Uh, the band's self-titled debut and only album was released on June 24th, 2014 on Partisan Records, produced by Brian Joseph and Features, Monica Martin on vocals, Matthew Holman on guitar, Jason Krunfuss on bass, Davy Roberts on drums, Matteo Roberts on keyboards, and possibly previous members Justin Van Huss on bass and ja- Zach Johnson on banjo. Jack Johnson, probably, because there is some very noticeable banjo. I just yeah. don't know when they left the band, because the information on these guys is very sparse. Hmm. Um, of course, before we get to the tracks, a reminder, I don't edit any songs into our episodes for copyright reasons, but down in the description, you'll find links to the album on Spotify, and on our blog post at johnscotto.com. You'll find links to the album on Spotify and YouTube. Uh, first track, Calico Man. Now, I've skimmed this album in the past. I've only really listened to a few songs. Oh, really? Um, so this, I waited too long because this was a, a, uh, an epiphany for me. <laughs> and it begins with something really slow and short, which was a very interesting choice. I mean, really, th- this intro pretty much told me everything I needed to know. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I was in. You know, she has this 40s, 50s kind of voice, very soulful. Mm. And it really gives you the feeling that you're going to go, you're about to be taken on a journey. It's a prelude. Yes. Very and much so. Usually when, when I see those, you know, short sub two minute tracks, I'm kind of like, oh, just kind of a throwaway thing. Mm-hmm. But this, they, they actually, they actually used it. For and it's got for. <laughs> this great um, sparse arrangement, just vocals, bass, keys, yeah. and some atmospheric guitar. At this point, I'm thinking Monica Martin owns this album. Yeah, And then I realized, because there's no drums on this, it took me a little, while, a little later to realize that Davey uh, Roberts owns it as well. Which one's Davey Roberts again? The drummer. Yeah, the drummer. Because there's no, there are no drums on this track. All right, because, on that track in, in particular, right? Yeah, on the first track, there are no drums, so it, I, I was focused on Monica Martin. And I think you, she's very much a case of you know, the no, what I call no doubt syndrome because they made a video about it where the singer gets all the attention. Well, that's any band. Yeah. <laughs> um, For some reason, people connect with the guy doing the talking. That's just true. I true. mean, it's, it's Penn and Teller, you know, it's, mm. it's any band, you know, you too. It's, but you know, and she deserves it. She has got an incredible voice, right? but the rest of the band does kind of fade away. And they're brilliant players, especially Davey Roberts, who I'll be geeking out about, uh, geeking out about a bit, quite a bit as we go on. Track two, Leisure. This one has a very 40s feel right out of the gate. Right. And, uh, you know, I'm kind of surprised that they would call this alternative folk because, I mean, this is kind of the state of alternative rock. It was, I, yeah. I, I would say at least since the late, you know, two thousand since the Mumfords, exactly, and they uh, they they take. I think there's a lot of a big Mumford influence on this, mm. uh, but not this yet, yet maybe. Which is why I'm very surprised that Punch Brothers are, aren't bigger. Just sidetracking a bit because yeah. they're clear they're they're in that very much that same vein, but better. <laughs> I, well, honestly, I think this is better than oh, a lot of. The I was never a Mumford fan. Right. A lot of the acts that got attention, I mean, I think like Sylvan Esso is a very similar band to this too, mm-hmm. only I think they're more synth heavier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but, but I think, you know, but uh, alternative rock has been in this weird, 
uh, 70s AM <laughs> kind of radio thing. And not just that now. very throwback, very folky, very 40s. You know? Well, yeah, yeah. I'm talking about like the really like 70s granola kind of sound, you uh-huh. know, like, and the Father John Misty and the Rex mm-hmm. Orange County guys. Uh-huh. I mean, just. Uh, but these guys have had some airplay back in. Oh yeah, probably, they exploded probably. when this came out. Um, this again, back to leisure. Um, yeah, very forties intro, but then this great groove kicks in. Love the slapback reverb on the drums, um, and the first line: "All this leisure has got me tired." <laughs> We couldn't have picked a better time to review this one. I yeah, I laughed out loud when I didn't catch what she was saying until like the very last time she said it. The song oh. I was like, "You've got to be fucking kidding me!" <laughs> not intentional. This is not one of the songs I was familiar with, but yeah, that that got me when I heard All it. All of this leisure has got me tired. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> But I love the sort of reverb heavy guitar, which is something I'm not really into, but it works so well with these guys. I would say most of the time the electric guitar makes an appearance on this album. I am an absolute fan and it makes mm. me really happy anytime it comes in. Mm. Um, love the little weird like synthy sound effect before verse two comes in and how the guitar just becomes more prominent as the song builds. It says it's got this great build up to the second chorus and then it softens for the bridge. Like, the dude is definitely a disciple of Steve Hackett. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there's so many, like, so, like the classical sounds, mm-hmm. the the strange sounds he does with it. It's just like, yeah. <laughs> and then it just builds to this nice, chaotic uh, uh, instrumental break with these affected drums. It right. just gets weird for a bit. <laughs> <laughs> and then just kind of abruptly ends. This was, uh, this is a favorite of mine, not my my favorite. I'll get to that later. Um, on to track three, slow motion. This is the one, one of the ones I knew. This was the big single. This was the big single, yeah. Um, love all the percussion in the beginning. It's got this great groove. Nice use of banjo. You um, got the whole clap track thing going. That was yeah. a big part of the teens. That I, mm-hmm. I, I mean, I don't hate it, but I'm kind of hoping that we leave that into the teens. <laughs> I, just, I just like percussion. <laughs> yeah. Um. Love the kick on the on the groove in the verse. Um, the whistling before the chorus was a nice contrast. Very, very cliche for the time, but it, it was a nice contrast for the rest of the track. And there's a clarinet solo. Right. I, I mean, I think put it when you take these things in isolation, whistling, the banjo, mm-hmm. the clap trap track, um, you know, on their own, eh. But together, they kind of work. It's kind of interesting when you throw the three of them together. And they are very cliche for the time, but this band knows how to work them. Um, also, some great drum fills during the instrumental break. Now, I'd kind of been hoping this was going to be a cover of an obscure Flaming Lips song. That's mm-hmm. uh, uh-huh. actually one of my favorite Lips songs, mm-hmm. but oh well. <laughs> On to track four, 1936. This is very acoustic, very straightforward. This is where they get folky. Yeah. Um, very dominant percussion, great harmonies. I think it's all Monica Martin on this one. I think she does all the vocals. Yeah. Um, nice sparse instrumental break before the second verse, um, which builds nicely. And then the drums get even more dominant because it starts very mellow and acoustic, but then it just kind of builds nicely. Yeah. I mean, really, I guess listening to this, I'm thinking the category eclectic would probably fit better yeah, yeah. But, or indie pop is, is pretty good too. Cause I think that's well, that indie pop it. is eclectic. You know, it's, it's that's that true. much of a meaningless, you know, catch all. Yeah. Um, on to track five evil. The beginning of this is almost disco. Like it's, I put, it's like a combination between Jeff Buckley and Mumford and Sons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's folk disco. Yes. Um, quickly go, fo- quickly goes folk. Loved the opening line, face deep in between my best friend's knees, telling me that you don't want to hurt me, and I just can't believe that any word falling off your plain lips isn't unclean. <laughs> you know, if you if you have any pretense that they they don't go there, they go there. Um, and this is when I realized that that drummer Davy Roberts, the drummer, owns this album just as much as Monica Martin does. This thing is loaded with percussion. Um, this one's a lot folkier than the previous songs, but it still has a great groove, and it has a trumpet solo. 
that classical guitar work on this. I mean, yeah. This is where he comes in with mm-hmm. that. Yeah. And a trumpet solo. Didn't see a trumpet solo coming with these guys. <laughs> like, the clarinet's kind of, you know, expected because they have a jazz influence, but the trumpet. Um, wish I knew who the additional players were because um, I could not find that anywhere. I had to How dig did... to find the producer. Why do those guys never get credit? Well, they usually do, but for some reason, it's not online huh. anywhere. Um, There's you know, a lot of albums more than that just Wikipedia. the players just don't get credit. Yeah, true. Um, but it was usually older albums, you know, in the 70s and 60s. Nobody cared. Yeah. Now they care. Um, I was um, actually just listening to uh, The Doors Soft Parade Special mm-hmm. Edition where they have without the strings and horns. Yeah. <laughs> that was if, really weird. If you don't. If you didn't do a fair amount of digging, you'd think that they actually didn't have any bass on their records. <laughs> but it was actually, um, I can't think of his first name, Jason Schaff's father, the guy who replaced Peter Zatera in Chicago. His father played bass on all of the door stuff. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. But back to uh, Evil. Nice yes. build in the middle of the song. There's this harmonized section that gets really country, which was a surprise. Um, yeah you gotta like the directions they would take you in yeah and then there's this quick synchronized syncopated guitar line at the toward the end that almost gets proggy yeah it, it it's amazing how many directions they can turn in on to track six laura this is my favorite nice slow kind of inviting electric piano it just kind of pulls you in to want to hear more Love all the reverb on the vocal. I love that Brian Joseph wasn't afraid to ju- just drench the entire album in reverb. <laughs> I, I wasn't a fan of this on the first listen, but the second it started to win, win me over. So mm. I don't know. I don't know if I actually have a strongest and weakest this week because mm. it's kind of. I, I mean, it was difficult album... for me to pick a weakest. Um, yeah, but this has just got. I'll get to why it's my favorite in a moment. Um, yep. This has just got this nice. So quiet build from this, you know, sparse quiet opening. It's beautifully moody. Um, great build. It build. It'll build up to get loud and then drop qu- really quiet again. And then, as I'm geeking out about how you know Davy Roberts is amazing and how he, he's not showy, he just plays perfectly. I hear this repeated line that just hits me like a ton of bricks. You can try and hide away from all the things that people say that you need to be okay, but you just stay the same. That line killed me. I, I was there for years. Um, so <laughs> that made it my favorite. That And, and just the, the dynamic changes. The lead guitar on the way out was almost a solo. Yes. We almost had a guitar solo. I know. Uh, that's kind of like the one thing I wish they had just let him well, they do later. a bit more. <laughs> There's yeah, a full-on guitar they... solo later. And this is where the album changes. Because up until you, it's kind of that twee folky thing up until this point. It gets a little more serious with this track, and then it just goes in weird directions after this. <laughs> Next track, track seven, Kingfisher. I thought this was a little boring at this point because I was still kind of that twee folky thing. And, you know, I thought maybe we needed a change. And then, you know, I hear the line, reverie is my goddamn right. <laughs> <laughs> Especially after Laura, because that was so moody and dark. We get this kind of twee folky thing. That line was like, okay, yeah, we're, we're doing the twee folky thing again. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, this is kind of the point. I mean, I liked the contrast between the flute in the intro and then the rise in the chorus and then mm-hmm. back to the simple flute. Yeah. But I think this point is kind of where I was like... I wish they would do less banjo. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's only actual banjo on a few tracks, but yeah, it's right, that right. sort of tone. I get what you mean. And then this was the last track that you hear banjo on. Mm-hmm. Or no, no, wait, the next one was the last. Maybe one. the last next one. Yeah, because yeah, the, the next, next one, one Shrinking Violets, track eight. This is this was my pick for weakest. Um, it's just that sound. The old timey sound is getting a little tiring at this point, to me. Yeah, I so said this. One, the the melody on this one's cool. Again, lose the banjo it makes for a good seasoning, but not a main course. Yeah, um, unless you're known Pickelney from Punch Brothers. Um, but yeah, this guy was good, but not that good. But um, then that guitar, electric guitar work at the end. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Damn. And then yeah, there's this nice jump in volume. 
that kind of tells you, okay, we're going somewhere else now. Right. He he just runs away with it. And then there's this nice acoustic look at the end on the guitar. Um, and then we get a little different. Um, Seder and the Fawn, track nine. Love the acoustic guitar in the intro. Nicely atmospheric, nice groove. And it's this retro feel from multiple eras. Yes, it's definitely... you've got some like '60s doo wop and the you know right. '40s thing and some folk, and it's it's they're combining genres really nicely here. And I think it's Monica Martin's probably her best vocal on the album, which is saying something. Hmm. On to track ten, "Noble Heart," opens with just a piano and a kick. Um, really impressive piano part. And it's a nice change from where they, what they had done before. Much poppier than the rest of the album. I felt um, the heartbeat kick was a little bit on the nose, though. <laughs> perhaps, yeah. Um, much poppier, but then the clarinet comes in. It's like, yeah, they're still they're still Fox, um, but much more modern, even despite the uh, clarinet. Builds nicely, um, nice reverb blade and guitar in verse two, and then there's this fuzz guitar solo. Yes. Out of fucking nowhere. Could have used more because if I know sometimes war is more. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It just it was a nice what the fuck, and it's a great solo. Yeah. And just this song needed it. Um, very and then a sudden groove change. It gets very sixties pop 50, soul, late fifties, early sixties. So yeah. Then, and then back to like this jazz thing going on. So I'm like, oh, th- this one might be my pick for strongest. It's definitely one of the most interesting. Yeah. Um, it goes on a journey. It's one of two that really go on a journey. Um, I I was starting to think maybe the album was falling down in the second half, and then we got to this one. Um, on to track eleven, Raspberry Seed. Again, nice sparse opening groove, drums, the, vocal, and piano. The drums are remind me a lot of uh, Bowie's uh, Five Years okay. on the Rise and Fall of Ziggy mm-hmm. Stardust. And they kind of take that little shuffle yeah. and kind of move it along with it. It slows down a bit for the pre-chorus. It's just acoustic yeah. guitar and vocal. Develops a bit in verse two. They really know how to arrange. <laughs> and maybe that's down to the producer. But, you know, the way the songs kind of rise and fall and everything kind of works together is beautiful. Um, The second verse starts to feel kind of anthemic, but also personal. Um, And then there's this instrumental break that's just acoustic guitar on one side. And there's this this, Sergio Leone. This this (laughs) atmospheric pedal steel on the other side. (laughs) I'm not sure if it really had a payoff or not, but. I mean, the first time I listened to it, I was kind of like, ah, I don't know. And then I think the second time I was starting to get into it more mm-hmm. like, ooh, I can feel this, like, you know, it's atmosphere. atmosphere. Yeah. <laughs> um, the drums and bass fade in nicely during that break um, into this nice, yeah, insistent groove. That's what it is. For a band like this, I'm not expecting an atmospheric thing. I'm just expecting a straight mm-hmm. kind of pop thing and a song and and to get in and get out but yeah you're right they they do lay on this crazy atmospheric and you it's know, man the, with insect- no ins- thing. the entire second half of the song is just instrumental yes. atmospheric right right and just builds and i was thinking maybe this should have closed out the album but then we get track 12 in due time nice acoustic ballad you always have to come. You always have to have the little uh, denouement after the, the uh, yeah, yeah. That was the, the climax. Half of, you know, <laughs> half a song being this like, atmospheric acoustic, this not acoustic, this big atmospheric build, and then we get the denouement. Yeah, like, like I don't know what episode we t- we covered that in. Maybe like the first or second, mm-hmm. but it, it's just this really nice, pretty ballad, um, beautiful harmonies. I don't think it's all Monica on this one. I think there are other vocalists. Um, and it's a nice goodbye to the band. It's about a failed relationship. Yeah. Uh, and she said, the lyric says, in due time, if I keep myself intact, I could wave to you through the window as I drive past. It's probably the closest they come to a folk sound mm-hmm. on, on the whole album, I think. Straight up folk, yeah. Yeah. So do you recommend it? I would. I would. I've never been to that corner of Wisconsin. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and it's a shame that... Uh, 
we couldn't see where this went. Yeah, that they didn't do more. From what I was reading, they were just a bent bunch of friends who got together to play on a, a friend's album. And then they ended up doing a show together, and it just kind of built and built from there. They never really intended to be a band. What led you to uh, include this on our list? I just, I've known about the album for years. I, I saw them on YouTube around 2014, 2015, and I've always just been kind of intrigued by them. I think uh, I think there's a lot of alternative or indie pop that you should give a chance, because I think there's a lot that... Uh... You know, comes from uh, yeah, you know. yeah, that's similar. Um, yeah, I kind of got put off by this sound for a long time because of Mumford. Well, yeah, because it's they were the frat boys of the they were the smash they were the smash mouth of this sound. Yes, yes, uh, they were. So but there I were better got... bands. <laughs> hmm? There were better bands that did it though. Yeah. and I kind of got put off for so for a long time. Recently, I might, I've kind of been expanding, you know, with because uh, for a long time I was very into guitar, bass, and drums, you know, the rock sound. Yeah. Um, in recent years, I've kind of expanded from that. I got, I've gotten into Punch Brothers and St. Vincent and just, you know, different sounds that aren't rock. And I mean, yeah. with, with our AWK. <laughs> So, you know, I, I should check out some more of that folky you know, alternative stuff. The Decemberists are one that I've kind of been leaning toward a little bit. I've heard a few songs that I like. Oh, yeah. Um, the National, too, is mm. another one. Anyway, I obviously recommend it. I put it on the list. Um, it's Well, I didn't know. I, when we came in, and you were kind of like, oh, I hadn't heard this one all the way through. I was like, oh, wait a minute. But well, yeah, because I, I had heard only bits it. and pieces of it up until, <laughs> but I knew I'd love it. If you're just like, ah, oh, this... Yeah, this kind of sucks. Sorry, I recommend put this on the list. <laughs> I, I'm kind of debating whether or not I could have gone straight from Bill Weathers to this or not. And I'm the asshole that, that's recommending it. <laughs> it's not I, mine. I'm not sure if this would have held up to Bill Weathers or not. It comes close. Like uh, if we I, could have gone straight from Bill Weathers without doing it a disservice. Ah, uh, they're, they're they're not I quite they're there. Different. Yeah, they're the, different. Uh, the the palate cleanser was the right idea. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's Although if... I think uh, from referencing last week's episode, uh, how did they not do? Because I, I thought of Florence again, Florence and the Machine in this. Mm. How did they not do Florence Rage Against Florence and the Machine? Yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> Especially I since think... that one song of Florence's got so overplayed. Yeah, it's the only song I think I've heard actually. <laughs> Anyway, that's it for Fox. Until next time, we'll be reviewing Blue Valentine by Tom Waits. Now, that's a transition that works. Whoa, yeah. Until then, always remember and never forget, wherever you go in life, there you are. There you are.